This was not a red wave. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the 2022 midterm elections. Now, this was billed by those on the left and the right as a potential red wave. It was going to be a shellacking of the Democrats by the Republicans in the House. We take the Senate. It was going to be this really big thing. But that's not what happened. This was not a red wave. This was more of a red ripple, a red splash, and also a red warning. Now, first things first, the Senate, we're probably going to lose. We had the Senate 50-50, which was a loss because the tiebreaker would be Kamala Harris. So if all the Democrats and the two independents, Angus King and Bernie Sanders, who also caucus Democrat, if they all vote for a particular thing, all you're going to need is Kamala Harris to be the tiebreaker, and then it'll go through. it go to the Joe Biden, sleepy, creepy Joe, who sign off on it, then that bill becomes law. And they already had the House. They had the House, they had the Senate, and the presidency. They control all three. What we have right now is a potential for the House to go to Republicans a most likely thing, Kevin McCarthy already came out and said that was going to happen. And he'd probably be the next speaker of the house right now. It's Nancy Pelosi, but since we'll take the house, she will not be the speaker anymore because she won't be the majority leader. Therefore it will be Kevin McCarthy most likely. And Nancy Pelosi may end up retiring. Although she did win her race out there in San Francisco at the age of, I don't know, 86, 87 years old. But anyway, <laughs> The term limit should be a thing, but I, I digress. Um, I'll bring up some maps right here because, and thank you to everybody that came through to the stream last night when I covered all the results live. I appreciate y'all. But let's go to this map because this is going to be pretty important. Now, the thing about the election, like I said, we'll take the house most likely, but just barely. It should have been a much wider margin. It should have been like 235. Like you got to have 218 to get majority in the house. Let me just pull up the house right quick on this particular map. You got to have 218 in the house, you see? And you see this area right here on the screen, this kind of uh, shaded red area. That means those races are not called yet, but they're leaning toward Republican. So we, we'll be right at the 218 mark. We should be well over the 218 mark into 230, 240 potentially. We'll be right at 218, 219 which would be just enough to take control of the house. And some of these house um, uh, reps are kind of shaky. So you don't know if they're going to caucus 100% of the time with Republicans. So sometimes they could kind of be influenced and go over to the left. It could be a mess. We need to have a much wider margin of control. Either way it goes, we'll take the house just barely, but not the Senate. The Senate is going to be an L, big time L, um, the craziest race out of all of them is John Fetterman winning Pennsylvania. John Fetterman cannot speak really. He can read, but he can't really communicate with you. If you're speaking to him, he can't really talk right back to you. He's got to have closed captioning above your head or you got to write it down. He can't really talk back to you normally because his speech is not right because he had a brain injury due to having a stroke earlier this year. OK, now, with all of that being known, with all of that being said, it still was not enough to make him lose. Now, he could have won with a wider margin, if not for the stroke, obviously, and he could have lost if there were debates that were held earlier. He also could have lost if Dr. Oz was a better candidate. Dr. Oz was seen as a rich guy from New Jersey who was not really involved in Pennsylvania politics like John Fetterman was. John Fetterman was the mayor of Braddock, Pennsylvania, right outside of Pittsburgh. Now, I'm not a Fetterman fan, obviously, but he may have been seen as a guy that made more sense for them to vote for, aside from the whole stroke thing. People didn't really see the stroke thing until after they had already been voting for a month in early elections, okay? But that was an embarrassing race out there in Pennsylvania. Now, Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker is still kind of up in the air with 98% of the votes. And I'm, this is about, about 12 noon, on Wednesday, November the 9th, 2022. So this could change. Now, the thing about Georgia, as I was saying all night, and again, thank you for being in the stream last night. If you were there, I appreciate you. But the thing I said all night was that in Georgia, I'm not sure about the rest of the country, but in Georgia, if you do not achieve 50% and more, like not just right at 50, 
if you do not achieve more than 50% of the vote in Georgia, in this situation, you got to go to a runoff where the top two vote getters will go against each other. And then you got to have a winner at that point. There's a, I think libertarian right here. I forget this guy's name. He has like 1.5% of the vote. So if that guy was not there, then there would be a winner. And the libertarian most likely took votes away from Herschel Walker, the Republican. So that's going to be a runoff on December the 6th in Georgia. We're right back here in 2020. Now, I hope you don't have Trump to come out and say that the election is rigged and don't vote because let's, let's talk about Trump. Now, I'm going to say a few things about Trump that are going to be critical. Uh, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just saying what I see. And also before I start, if Trump runs in 2024, I'd vote for him. However, I don't think he should run. Now, let me go back to the whole thing about the runoffs. In 2020, Trump said the election, it was rigged, it was stolen. So don't vote. Do not go out there and vote. He said that after the election. And remember, there was a there were two runoff races, if I'm not mistaken, or at least one out there in Georgia for the Senate. And of course, we lost those races because Trump said don't vote. So people took his word for it. Not everybody, but enough people did not show up to vote. There was exit poll data. There was data that said there was a big drop off when it came down, when it came time to the runoff elections. That's why we have Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff as the two senators out there in Georgia. That's why. Because Trump said don't go out there and vote because he was upset about the election result. Now, let's talk about that part. Was there funny stuff going on in 2020 with the election? Sure. Was it national? No, because each state has their own rules. Okay. The thing you should do rather than just refusing to vote is to get tighter laws in your particular state. Tighten up your laws. Get people in there, hold their feet to the fire on a local level so the laws are going to be tightened up. They did that in Georgia. And what do you have as a result? Democrats talking about voter suppression, but the reality on the ground is a record high turnout for elections. And you have Brian Kemp winning yet again. And I think he won with a wider margin than he did in 2018. So he won in 2018. Was it rigged back then? He won in 22. He won in 2022 as well. Right now, did he win by happenstance? Was it rigged again? Or was he the better candidate? Did he have the better campaign? Okay, people went out there, they showed up for Brian Kemp. But Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker, Herschel Walker was a flawed candidate, a deeply flawed candidate. If not for the fact that Warnock and Ossoff won because of the lack of people supporting the runoff, then we would not be here right now. We would have this Senate, so all this spending and whatnot just simply wouldn't be. Now, Trump said that he's going to run, or he's alluded to the fact that he's going to run. People kind of caught that. And a lot of people switched their vote from left or well, from right to left because of that. If he said he was going to run, it would have been worse last night because he's so toxic. He has so much baggage that if he runs or if he says he's going to run or if he endorses you, it may not actually help you. And like I said, I would vote for Trump. I'm thankful for what Trump did for this country in 2016 and 2020. I'm thankful for that. I appreciate him. But we can't act like the, he, don't, he doesn't have any flaws. They didn't make any mistakes because he most certainly did. And I think a lot of those mistakes showed up in the election last night. I think so. Not everyone was damaged by um, Trump or anything like that or just having bad candidates. Uh, Doug Marciano in Pennsylvania was a disaster. That was a Trump back person. But some Trump back candidates did actually perform very well. Um, some people that Trump said to go vote for performed very well, like DeSantis. But DeSantis was not really helped by Trump. DeSantis was helped by DeSantis because he's a very good governor. He had solutions, handled the hurricane very well. Greg Abbott, same thing. He had solutions. The whole thing with the, the power outage might have been on a little slip up. But, I mean, people love Greg Abbott out there in Texas, and it's a deep red state anyway. Florida, same thing with DeSantis. So, I mean, it is what it is. Brian Kemp, Bill Lee in Tennessee. They love, we love Bill Lee out here in Tennessee. So these races were won by strong candidates that knew what they were doing. Okay, Mike DeWine out there in Ohio. Was he a Trump-supported person? I'm not really sure that he was. Trump does not have the juice that he had back in 2016. A lot of these people are winning their races because of what they've done for their constituents 
not necessarily being worried about being controversial or grabbing headlines or whatnot. Trump was needed in 2020, but not so much right now. So now we're trying to figure out, okay, who's going to be the next governor of Arizona? And speaking about Arizona, there was some funny stuff going on with the, with the, um, the machines in Maricopa County. But again, that doesn't mean the election is rigged. That just means that Arizona's got to tighten up their elections. See, the thing about the elections, as I close, is that they are state to state, which is beautiful. It's great. It's no federal thing. At the same time, that could be a problem because Nevada was talking about they're having a hard time being able to count votes due to lack of staffing. And this is looking good, though, for Republicans. Joe Lombardo, the GOP candidate, is winning over Steve Sisloak, the incumbent Democrat. That looks good right there. Kari Lake could win in Arizona. So it's looking pretty good for us in some parts of the country. But overall, the red wave that should have been was not. Uh, Georgia's going to be a runoff. Uh, Wisconsin is very close. You got Mandela Barnes, the Democrat, um, running up against Ron Johnson, the incumbent, the incumbent Republican. And that could go either way. Arizona, uh, Blake Mass was already lost, I think. And he conceded to Mark Kelly, if I'm not mistaken. That's, that's pretty much, it, it might, that might be a done deal right there. So this, this is not very good. Fetterman, that was really embarrassing. Uh, Chuck Schumer, that was going to be what it was anyway. So I don't know. I, I think that what we got to do going forward is look at this as, as kind of a, a warning and a reckoning saying, hey, you can't just rely on controversial takes and stuff that worked back in 2016. You got to think about what's happening right now with the young people, the Gen Z's and everybody else and the independent voters that might kind of ride the fence. They might be a split ticket type person. You got to think about what's best for them and how they're going to be able to go forward because this right here was not a very good performance. And I think we got to just kind of shift gears if you want to have success in the future. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what said you, how do you feel about the elections last night? Do you think that this was a success for the GOP to take the house but not the Senate. Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. Should Trump really be involved here? Should Trump talk about, oh, he's going to run in 2024, make an announcement right before? He made an announcement right before the midterm elections, like right on a day of, almost, right before. And according to some sources, he was going to announce his run right at that moment. It's like, I like Trump personally. A lot of you guys like Trump, but I think he needs to kind of just fall back and be somebody that helps whenever it's when it's requested. That's what it should be. And also he's old. He's 76 right now. So he'd be 78 in 2024. So he'd be 82 at the end of his term. Joe Biden is old as well. They're not going to run Joe Biden. Joe Biden is 80 years old right now. He'd be 80 at the end of this month, November the 20th. He'll be 82 at the end of his term in 2024. So 86 at the end of the second term, he won't run again. They'll put a guy like Gavin Newsom and that other guy, what's, what's my man's name? They'll put Mandela Barnes from Wisconsin, the Senate hopeful. They'll put him next to Gavin Newsom as a president, vice president, Gavin as a president. And then they'll, if, if you put Gavin Newsom and Mandela Barnes against Trump, they win. And it's, it wouldn't even be close. And it wouldn't even be about no voter um, integrity, no election fraud, because Many states have tightened their elections up. Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, Texas, the places where Trump would win, they've tightened their elections up. So that can't be the excuse at all. It can't be. And furthermore, talk about the election fraud right quick as I close real this time. Even if there was funny stuff happening back in 2020 with the election, it shouldn't have been that close. Okay, just like with um, J.D. Vance and Tim Ryan, it shouldn't have been that close. It should have been... A, a walk away victory. The fact that it was that close means that there were some flaws in the candidate and the campaign. We got to learn from that and don't make any excuses and go forward if we're going to have any success in the GOP. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.